This is Ioannis Rigopoulos, and uh, today I will uh, present a lecture about uh, SONIA, software LIBOR, and the yield curve construction, and also a dual curve swap pricing in Excel. So the plan of the lecture will be divided into three parts. The first part, we try to explore uh, the definition of a yield uh, curve. And uh, you will see that um, I will view a yield curve from a different angle than what you have seen traditionally in the course until now. Uh, because of my experience as a quant in the past, I had to I used to work about 16 years for uh, global banks as a quant. Uh, we always faced um, a yield curve from a different perspective. And this is what we are going to uh, uh, discuss uh, today. So the second part, we try to see the practical aspects of a yield curve, exactly how we can use a yield curve and what benefits we draw from it. In the last part, where it will be quite interesting, we're going to present an exact valuation of an overnight index swap. Now, we are in the first sheet, X curve DF. This is if you remember the very first uh, uh, task that we had was to create a, a curve, a yield curve, by using input discount factors. And here in column D, which I highlight here, this in this column with a blue color, you remember blue color means user input. These are the discount factors that I have entered by hand. On the front row, the one facing us, uh, these colorful blocks, the, these are the discount factors that we saw earlier. So the 16 of August 2021, 17 of August, and so on. Behind it, you have another row of uh, blocks, which are a few uh, the prices of certain stocks. For example, MSFT, which is the Microsoft, uh, Google, Apple, Amazon, Cisco, Twitter, and General Electric. I just picked up these names, could be any other names. But what I want to show you is, imagine now, we will, now everything is frozen, right? This is a time, instant in time. Now imagine now the time flows, so that the clock is ticking. What we are going to see? We are going to see some volatility, right? We are going to see all these blocks be getting taller, or shorter, all except the first one, the blue one, because th that will be stuck to the value of one. So if you see here, for example, on the far right, or the very right, the one that you see here, I put here in the blue, uh, a text label and the arrow, I say this is the probability distribution of DF, of discount factors, maturing at 16 August 2022. So, the, the bell-shaped curve on the very, very right, so it goes starts like that, you see my mouse, goes up and falls down like that. This is the distribution of the last discount factor. So it's basically the same like the one here, we saw two-dimensional, but now it's like you, you rotate it with an angle, basically, it goes in depth, okay? That's the same curve. Now, the next to that on the left, this curve in the middle, is the next, the discount factor, the one that matures one day earlier, so on the 15th of August. This one here will be on the 14th, and this one, which also I put this blue label, will be the discount factor uh, maturing on the 13th of August. And that, again, these are the probability distributions of all these discount factors. You see, we have a typical fixed load. We have a counterparty, let's call it B, uh, which counterparty promises to pay at, in the future time, uh, in about four months, in 6th of December 2021, 100 million US dollars to us. Right? And the counterparty B has a certain credit profile. And let's say the credit profile of the counterparty B is the same as that of an issuer called X. 
The question is how much would you like to pay today for this promise? Okay, so you need this kind of visualization. It's a different thing. When you say by this big circle, the whole thing, combined green and red, right? The whole circle thing. It's uh, or, uh, represent visually, it represents visually all possible states of the world as of the future time t. And we call that with a, it's uh, our, our habit to refer to that with a Greek capital Greek letter omega. So omega represents the set consisting of all possible world states at a given point of time, right? This as of the capital T. Now, now the green part is the situation where we have success, S means success, we do receive the money, and the red part is the situation where we have the failure. Now, this chart, I prepared this uh, yesterday in order to clarify the conceptual proof, the no arbitrage argument proof that is here on this table, credit support annex. So you see here is basically the same situation. I don't need to read it, it's the same like before, but here in the third line, the rate R is defined as the rate in which the market will be willing to let two is here, why? now at 6 of November. So the rate R, the floating rate R will linked to an to a, will have a, will be linked to a credit profile, to a credit regime, which will be different than the credit profile of the SQRX. If you see the, the, the picture here on the right, I, I will explain what I mean by that. The, Counterparty B will still have the credit profile of the issuer X, like before. What that means is there are states of the world where you have this collapse here. You see the, the diagram, the nice three-dimensional diagram on the top. You have this left part with a blue color that collapses down. The, why this happens? Because of the credit profile of the counterparty B is associated with the issuer X. And the issuer X will suffer a catastrophic uh, heat, injury, damage, whatever, uh, that can be described with this kind of surface, this kind of shape, when you have this kind of collapse. All right? This stays the same like before. So this part of the graph here is the, the left part with the collapse is the same like, if I go to the other seat, like this one. But the remaining part of the hill, now the, the healthy part, without the collapse, on the right side, right? This will have now a different shape. Why? Because this is linked, that's the payoff that is linked to the rate R, but the rate R now will move differently in the future. Why? Because the rate R is linked to a different issue, to an issue Y. So this right part, if you see, it has a different overall shape than if you go here to the that shape, to that shape. So it's not the same shape anymore. The first exercise is to calculate the net present value of a single coupon collateralized floater using spreadsheet formulas. I give you ex exact instructions how you can do that and I help you, I give you three hints and I give you actually the cash flows here that are written by the Deriscope formula. So if you click here, a red color is always the output of Deriscope. That's a formula here. You can hit return, this calculated. If you don't have Deriscope, no problem. You open the spreadsheet in manual calculation mode, so you have these numbers. It will give you some idea of the difficulties to have the numbers, everything precisely together, like the trade the floor of a bank will do, right? You have to pay consideration to the most minute of detail. The calendars, the, the exact dates basically must match. And the second exercise is uh, this one here. That's more difficult because this is a swap. So you don't have na now one leg, you have two legs. If you see that column here, you have leg one and leg two, one, two, alternate. 
uh, one leg receives, the other leg pays. The swap is defined here. And then you are asked to calculate the net present value of that swap, the price of the swap today. Okay, let's move very quickly now to the last part of this lecture, which is the OIS. That's very, very important. Why? Because OIS is an overnight index swap. It's a swap where it has two legs, right? One leg pays, it's very simple, pays a fixed rate, like in a vanilla swap contract. But the second leg pays the compounded average of the overnight index over a certain period. Uh, in this spreadsheet, I'm using a US dollar currency here. Currency is USD. That's the term sheet again. And the overnight index, which is being uh, compounded or averaged over its interval, is the SOFR. Now, the whole OIS expires maturity in on one mark. Why that I make that so simple so that all periods are represented here, and you can see here the detailed calculation with every detail that is can be you can think of. So you cannot get anything more precise than this. Everything is taken into account to calculate the value of the OIS. Uh, and the value of IS, uh, okay, let me go through the term sheet. Uh, first of all, what an OIS is. An OIS, I explain what it is, but let's see also the diagram here. This is taken from the blog article that I have authored. I showed you the link earlier. You, it's a nice reading, actually, but I, I copy and paste that picture here that I have prepared, which shows a typical OIS structure. So uh, you have time zero and you have I capitalize the index the overnight index, for example, the software, uh, that is uh, uh, that accrues on, on every day. And here the, the, the dots represent consecutive calendar dates, actually business dates. So T0 to T1 is one business day apart. T1 to T2 is another business day apart. So at T0, a, a certain so far, index, overnight index prevails. This index is accrues over that one business day. And then the, the, the compounded amount that has been uh, accrued from T0 to T1, then on that amount, the I2 now, the next index that is fixed on that day, T1 applies, and so on and so on, and you reach to the, national, to the final one. And the final rate is given by that formula that you see at the bottom, which is a product of these compounding factors. You subtract one in the numerator in order to get the pure interest amount that has been accrued without the initial principal. And then you divide the effective that earned interest amount, you divide with the amount of time. The, the, the so far overnight index has been properly calculated to 0.0677%, but the two remaining business dates after that, they are not calculated properly, correct, but they are being forced to be considered equal for the purposes of calculating the final composite daily uh, composite uh, term rate, right? And the value of the swap, they're considered equal to that rate. So that's beauty of Excel. You can play around, change the numbers, and make it back to what was to one. The same thing if you do play with observation lag. Let's say you have zero and you make the observation lag equal to, you increase it one day. You will see that the dates now will be shifted backwards. You see all the dates have, not all of them, but some dates have been shifted back to, for example, here is not 18 of August, the fixing date start like we had before, but it's, 17 of August. Why? Because we observing backwards. So I can make it back to the normal one, which is zero. You see, you, I think that's really beautiful because this spreadsheet has no there is uh, no third party analytics. They are all, if you click here, only Excel spreadsheet formulas are used. So you can run it at your PC. You are not dependent on any third party.